Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Deb Uber, the Education Coordinator for the Embryo Adoption Awareness Center. We are excited to have you all here tonight. This evening, we are pleased to bring you the webinar entitled Creating a Life Book, Telling Your Child's Unique Story. Our presenters tonight are Megan Fabian, Rhonda Anderson, and Katherine Stanley. They recently joined us for a great webinar about creating a family profile, and we are happy to have them back. Um, Ms. Megan Fabian was the director of the Snowflakes Embryo Adoption Program at Nightlight Christian Adoptions for seven years. She left her position to become a new mom and pursue her master's degree in social work. Um, she's very passionate about adoption, and particularly in embryo adoption, so she was thrilled to be a part of this webinar. Um, then we have Rhonda Anderson. Rhonda is the founder of Our Memories for Life, a heritage maker's brand. She is Senior Vice Chairman Marketing Director at Young Evity and co-founder of Creative Memories. Rhonda's tradition of creating family photo albums sparked the birth of Creative Memories, a company that's committed to helping people celebrate and preserve photos and stories. In February 2014, Rhonda partnered with Heritage Makers and their parent company, Young Evity, where she developed a line of traditional scrapbooking products called Our Memories for Life. Rhonda has been married for 35 years to Mac, and together they have four grown children, two biological sons, and two adopted daughters from India. Um, Mac and Rhonda also have eight grandchildren, which is awesome. And then our third presenter, Catherine Stanley, is Senior Executive Marketing Director of Young Evity and Heritage Makers, as well as a former Creative Memories Director. She worked with Rhonda Anderson on product design for both Creative Memories and Our Memories for Life brands, and was the writer for the Creative Memories Baby Pages, which were designed to work equally well for adoptive and biological children. She enjoys helping families celebrate and connect through their photos and stories. Catherine has three grown children and one that's at home. So ladies, we are happy to have you tonight, and um, let's get started, Megan. Okay, thank you so much, Deb. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I just looked at our list of attendees, and I want to say hello to several clients that I see are on um, that I worked with in Snowflakes before I moved on to do other things. So I'm so glad you're here and everybody. Um, I am especially excited about doing this webinar on LifeBooks, um, and I decided to share a little bit about why I'm so excited. Um, it is really based on my personal story where my passion comes from because my parents were infertility patients when they, before they had their kids, <laughs> before they had me. And um, they actually used a sperm donor in the creation of me and my younger brother. However, not having the proper tools or education, they did not inform us of that until we were in our early 20s. Um, and I would definitely say that's too late. Um, there was there was definitely some hurt feelings about why the secrets, um, never any hurt feelings about why not dad's sperm. <laughs> but um, I, I always knew the infertility story, but I never knew that piece. So I'm very passionate about equipping parents to tell their children the truth about their beginnings um, from an early age. I just think it is, it's such a beautiful story. Everybody who's been on this journey has this desire to be parents, and uh, that is that is a treasure to give to your children. So we are hoping to give you the words to convey that treasure to them. So let's start with, with what is a life book? A life book is telling the child the missing pieces of their story from the moment they came into the world or in, in the embryo adoption, the moment they were conceived, to the moment that they came to be your child. Let's go to the next slide. We'll keep talking about that. Um, it is important because it's something tangible that the child can keep and look at whenever he or she wants. So you can tell the story over and over again, and that is very special, just telling it. But it's also really neat for the child to have something that he or she can go to and look at and see pictures, um, put faces with the story that you're telling them, and uh, really have kind of some some semblance of control of their own story. They can show it to who they want to show it to. They don't have to show it to anyone if they don't want to. Um, it, it gives them that control over it and lets them have something tangible about their beginnings, especially if there is no way to contact the um, the genetic family or the donors from, from who they came. Let's go to the next slide. 
And so <laughs> she looked pretty surprised about her two kiddos love her very much. That's obvious. This, the life book is a really easy way for you to talk about adoption. So um, it helps bring up the story maybe more naturally than it would if you just were going to bring it up in conversation. So if you, you create this life book and have it on the shelf with the, the child's other books, sometimes, well, I often recommend making two copies, one that's kind of your keepsake copy and the other one that can go on the shelf that maybe can get a little bruised and beat up along the years while you guys are reading over it and looking at it, um, but that there always will be another copy that is, um, you know, looks really nice so that in case this one, the other one does get too too damaged uh, or whatever, that, that that you can go back to the the nice looking one. Um, but it it gives you guys it gives parents a way to um, read the story and share it and bring up adoption topics without having to bring up a maybe uncomfortable conversation. So it, it leads the story naturally. Let's go to the next slide. Um, and it makes it okay to bring up adoption. So if you're reading this this story with your child, um, your life book plus having other books on your shelf that are related to adoption, then your child knows that this topic is okay to talk about and that they don't need to be concerned when they have questions if whether or not you're going to be open to those questions or how you're going to receive those questions. And this this creates security for the child, knowing what happened to him before living with you. Um, also, just the the knowledge of having a, a book to go to and knowing that this book is available, knowing that the topic of adoption is safe, um, gives, the, gives kids a lot of confidence and security. And I know that for adoptive families, sometimes it's a sensitive issue for the parents and that um, I would say for sure if if you're struggling to bring up the topic with your child or you don't know the, the words to say, that's more a reflection of your um, your inner struggle. And, and that's okay. That's very natural. Um, but maybe creating the book will even put some peace in your heart about that and then being able to have that safe place in your heart, in your home, for your child to talk about adoption and bring it up whenever he or she feels the need to. Um, that's, that's important, and it, and it makes for um, a security in the child's heart. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so life books are important for all types of adoptions and alternative family building. And again, this is really based on my personal experience of um, of my parents using the sperm donor, but not really understanding the importance of sharing that with us from an early age. Um, so foster adoption, domestic adoption, international embryo, and then egg sperm donor or surrogacy, all of them have um, a similarity in that the child was cared for, loved, somewhat raised maybe by people not related to him or her. So um, they are, they're connected to these people in a very special way and they deserve to know who those people are. Let's go to the next slide. So the child has a right to know about the important people in her life whom she is connected to if the husband and wife did not conceive the child together. Um, and that meaning that, you know, if there are genetic people uh, or people who are genetically related to the child that are not the husband and wife, that are not raising the child, the child needs to know that it's important and not just for medical reasons, but just for the child's peace and security moving forward through life. I think that um, in some way they they might have a sense that there is something like that, even though they've never been told if they're older. And uh, just telling the truth, it, I, I would rest on the the part in the Bible that says the, the truth sets you free. So it doesn't mean that it's easy all the time, but it, it does set you free and sets the child free. Let's go to the next slide. So how to, how to create an embryo adoption life book. So embryo adoption is different than the other forms of adoption, obviously, because this child is going to be born to you, but not conceived of your genes, so of your genetics. Um, so the story is of the moment the child was conceived, when the sperm and egg came together, until he or she was born to you. So uh, that might be several years of the embryo's life. <laughs> Um, maybe conceived in, I, I remember when I wrote the the life books pages for parents, like a, an outline of them, I would say, you know, you want to 
right when the child was conceived, so maybe like 2000, you know, when were they adopted? Okay, 2005, and when were they born in 2007? Well, that's that's important for that little one to know. Their their life didn't start in 2007 when they were born. It really started several years earlier with a different family. Let's look at the next slide. So important things to include, um, you want to include the genetic egg source and sperm source. And this in some cases is the genetic mother or father as they can be called, um, the people who did IVF together and then placed embryos for adoption. Or it could include one or the other and, and then an egg donor or a sperm donor, which might have been an anonymous person. It might have been um, a sister or a brother or other relative of the genetic mother or father. Uh, and then any genetic siblings. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, other things important to include. This is kind of the social history behind it, um, why you chose this genetic family or these embryos. Um, and that's that's a special piece. That's I know when my when my parents told us about the sperm donor, I said, well, well, how did you pick? I I want to know the the profile. <laughs> My mom said, well, we didn't, we didn't pick. We didn't have anything to pick. And I, I was just appalled because uh, by that time I, I knew about sperm donors and egg donors, and, and I, I thought for sure they had picked something. But nope, that wasn't the way it went for them. Um, so I think that, that just knowing why, why them and, and not another family or not another set of embryos, that's so special to the child. And then why that family chose you? What did they see in you that made them decide this is the family to adopt our embryos? And then you want to include the day of the transfer, just things like, was it a long drive? Did you get up early in the morning? Tell the story. It's, it's such a special story and such a big day in, in, your, in your life and in your child's life. You want to tell the story. And then, of course, the day of birth. Whoops, I didn't move my mouse around enough. My computer went out. Okay, here we go. And then the closing, um, in closing, you want to, I encourage parents to do some kind of thankful reflection on genetic family's choices and the journey that brought your son or daughter to you. So that's something about, you know, how, how grateful you are that this genetic family chose embryo adoption instead of the other alternatives they could have chosen. Even embryo donation through a, a clinic would have been something anonymous, but instead it's embryo adoption. Um, and they got to pick you, and you have some semblance of contact so or knowledge of each other. It's very special, and it's it's wonderful to put in there that you're honoring their their genetic family in the, in some sort of way there. Let's go to the next slide. Um, other ideas. So I kind of think of this as bonus material that I would love to see every parent put in, but if you're one of those people that just you can't get it done unless it's pretty simple. You can have, you can skip this part, <laughs> but I really I like I like putting this in for the kiddo. Um, any embryos created at the same time, which I call embryo siblings, even if they weren't born, because I think that is that's another special part of that child's life. The names of the original clinic where the IVF was done originally, um, and the doctor and embryologist, because those were significant people to the child. Um, that's that's the one thing my mom could tell us about our story is she knew the doctor that did all her fertility treatments and uh, his name and where he worked. So uh, that was helpful. And then your IVF clinic and doctor and embryologist because those were important people in your part of the journey. And then the day of the pregnancy test results. You would, I think a lot of parents maybe share that with their child. At least I share it with my daughter. But <laughs> um, it's important because this was a really special day for you. And uh, that was that was a story that I grew up with a lot. My, I heard a lot about the day my mom finally realized that that she was finally pregnant. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Other ideas, bonus material, um, pregnancy memories. So of course now the child is in your womb and growing, and uh, this this is maybe more comfortable part of the story to share, um, but it is still before they they were born to you. So any cravings or baby showers or prayers and hopes, anything unique about your pregnancy, um, how you told the genetic family about the baby. And then, of course, if the genetic family didn't want to be notified, um, you can leave this part out. But um, if you did tell them, you know, how, how did they respond? Did you get to call them? Did they cry? Were they 
singing? You know, did you write them a card or a letter and send a picture? How did that go? Um, and then any reactions they had, if they sent you an email or a card or balloons, I don't know. Um, and then hopes and dreams you have for your child or appropriate scripture or inspirational message. That's just a nice way to, to close um, the, that part of the of the story, just to leave your child with something inspiring. Next slide. So if you're getting started to do your book, if you're getting ready to do your book, you want to have pictures of, if, you, if possible, the genetic mother and genetic father. Um, even if you just have one picture, it is so such a treasure for the child to be able to see uh, the people that they're genetically related to. Um, the egg donor or sperm donor, if appropriate, if that's applicable to your situation, and if it's possible, I know a lot of those donors, they, we don't have any pictures, but if it's possible. Um, and then any pictures of genetic siblings, whether they live in your family or a different family or many different families, which is sometimes the case. Let's go to the next slide. People to include um, your family before the baby was born. So you you or you two, um, while you were you know, trying to have a baby or going through the adoption process, and then your adoption agency or um, embryo donation coordinator, whoever helped you on in that arena, it's nice to have their picture so that your child can see uh, the person who was kind of responsible for the adoption side of things. And then the clinic coordinators or directors, anyone that you were significantly connected to at your clinic, maybe you developed a relationship with one of your nurses or somebody. Um, your IVF doctor and your embryologist, all people important in your child's embryonic life. Let's go to the next slide. Um, other possible ideas, your adoption agency or embryo donation program. So by this, I mean I have w literally walked outside our office and taken a picture of the Snowflakes <laughs> um, nightlight building so that I could send it to somebody. So if you can get your agency to do that, that would be great. The fertility clinic, so again, if, I'm sure some of these uh, websites have pictures of the, the outside of the clinic. And then anyone else important to you at your clinic. Even we have here the FedEx guy. I have definitely had people take pictures of uh, like the embryos in the tanks where the FedEx people drop them off and, <laughs> and have those in their life book. Let's go to the next slide. And then the pregnancy part. So transfer day, like how many embryos were transferred? You know, if sometimes the doctors will actually give you pictures of the embryos after they saw. What a special thing to have. I mean, how many people in the world have a picture of themselves as an embryo? Hardly any. So if you can get pictures of the embryos, that would be so special. Um, and then just, you know, include pages on what you did the day of transfer. Like, did you guys go out to lunch afterwards or did you come home and watch movies or... What what did you do? How did you how did you handle that day? It's a, a really big day, often a very emotional day. Um, embryos again, pictures of embryos, pregnancy tests. So what was that day like? A lot of people are taking these at home tests before their actual blood test. <laughs> Put that in there if you did that. Your pregnancy. So obviously you want pictures of your nice round belly, and then. Um, include your child's birthday day. So, of course, pictures of the day that they were born and uh, your time at, at the hospital or wherever you had your baby. Next slide. Okay, and then I really want to iterate, uh, or um, whatever the word is, I really want to impress on you that it is helpful to use proper terminology and vocabulary. So f sperm, egg, I would even go so far to use ovum instead of egg. Um, and then embryo and uterus. So <laughs> I read once in the, in a book about life books that if you tell your child that they grew in your tummy, which I know is so, so common, so I'm not poo-pooing the parents who say that, but <laughs> I'm just encouraging you. If you tell your child that you grew, he or she grew in your tummy, then they, they might come away with this notion of like spaghetti falling on their head while they're growing inside because that's where your food goes. So if you tell them you grew in a special place called my uterus or my womb where babies grow uh, before they're born, then that, that that's a separate compartment. <laughs> so it helps be clear to the child. Um, and then if you use ovum instead of egg, it, it differentiates between like a chicken egg that they're familiar with and then an, uh, ov an ovum in a, in a human that is different. And, and I, you know, you can find all these pictures online. It's amazing these days. 
So just go on Google Images and type these things in, and you'll have your choice of sperm pictures and ova pictures. Let's go to the next slide. And then your use of faith. I know a lot of families, um, faith is important to them. And if it is relevant to your story, I, I would really encourage you to include it. Sometimes it can kind of um, smooth the transition of, you know, why did they choose you or why did we choose them? And sometimes the simple answer is that you prayed and you felt God speak to you that this was the one. Or, you know, you were lead you were following God's lead for your life and uh, if, if faith is important to you and something you want to pass on to your child, I mean, what a better way to give them the example of following in in your faith than uh, to include it as part of their life book. So um, that's that's special. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is really important. What do you do when you don't have important information? And the, the, it's important to state the truth. If you don't have it, just state you don't know. We don't know what your sperm donor look like. We don't know what your egg donor look like. We don't know how many other embryos were created at the same time as you. We don't know. So that it's not it's not like a secret, like something that can't be discussed. Um, it opens the door for questions if the child has them. So it is really important to include the statement that we don't know whatever it is you don't know. And it might be a whole lot depending on your your situation and where your embryos came from. Maybe you know absolutely very little, and so you might have a lot of we don't knows in there, but it's it's important to open that door by saying we don't know um, and whatever it is. And then, like, for example here, we don't know exa exactly what your sperm donor looked like, but we know he had brown hair and brown eyes. So put what you do know. Um, and sometimes if, if you have no information, um, you can say, we don't know, you know, and then pose a question. What do you think he might have looked like? Um, so it, it lets the child state some of his or her thoughts. Again, really, the, the point is to, to not have any secrets and to invite conversation as needed. So now um, I'm finished with my part, and I am going to turn over the speaking to Rhonda. So welcome, Rhonda. We can't wait to hear what you have to share. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Megan. I loved hearing your story and didn't know that about um, about your childhood, so that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, yeah, super fun. Well, on the screen now, you're seeing the first page of the photo album that I created for our second adopted daughter, Julia Coel. And uh, as mentioned in my bio information by Deb, my husband and I have two biological sons and then two adopted daughters from India. Both the babies from India came when they were three months old. The first one weighed only five pounds, one ounce when she arrived home. Our second baby, Julia, weighed, weighed 10 pounds when she came home. And so our situation is a bit different um, than the embryo adoption, but yet there are some elements that are very, very similar. Um, in our situation, we knew nothing about the baby's um, birth parents at all. All we knew was that the babies were abandoned in a back alley behind a nursing home where the mothers got a black market supply of Pitocin and could induce their delivery. And oftentimes the babies were born to young girls ages 13 to 14 who had treated their bodies for food. But they didn't, nobody knew anything because the mission of hope found these babies in a back alley and brought them into their mission. And so all they could tell us is where they found, what alleyway, basically, that our baby was found in. And so that took away, um, you know, a, a lot of information that we could have shared, but now it couldn't because we didn't know, as Megan said. So these, this album that you're seeing here, um, many, many years ago, Catherine Stanley, who will be speaking here soon, and I designed, and Catherine uh, did the majority of the work, and in fact, the little poem down there was Catherine's poem. But uh, these baby pages were created specifically, as she has mentioned, for adoption and biological children. And so this first page is, hey, this is a story about me. And I love that about these pages and encourage you, when you make your life book, to really make sure that it's clear. This is a story about this child. Everybody loves to be a star 
and to let that child know, I'm a star of this photo album, that's awesome. And then Art goes on to say, and the people who love me. So let's uh, go on to the next slide. Now, as you heard Megan say, there are so many great stories to tell. And on the left side of this page, we didn't have a picture of an embryo, but we had a referral picture. And that's the little black and white photo you see here. We received that picture um, with a letter that said, would you adopt this baby? Um, and it's heart-wrenching to take a look at these little babies. Our, our first daughter weighed two pounds, three ounces, and had dropped to one pound, 12 ounces. Yeah, one, one pound, 12 ounces in the nursery, and her picture was horrible looking. She looked like a little old man. Um, but, you know, for us, we had been praying and asking the Lord to guide us in the process. And so for both of our adoptions, we took one look at that little picture and said, yes, we're going to take that baby. And so on, on this page, it says, here I come, and you, you can't see it very, very well. But it says, folks knew I was on my way when. And so, like Megan said, this is where we get to tell some of the story. Um, and for us, when we accepted the referral, then what did we do to prepare? And so it really, really is fun to go back um, and tell the world, or whoever will look at this photo album in the future, these amazing fun details. Uh, the other line that you probably can't read very clearly says, and what a story I have to tell. And boy, is that true. Because... For all of you listening, you have a really amazing story to tell. You do. I mean, adoption alone is an amazing story. Embryo adoption, oh, wow, you've taken another step in amazing. I think our adoption from India uh, was amazing. So it, it is a fabulous story to tell, and I really want to challenge you not to scrimp on the details. I have spent most of my adult life, nearly 30 years, um, trying to inspire people to journal, to tell their story. And if there was ever a time to really take that advice, it is now for your children. Whether you, like me, have both adopted children and biological, they all deserve to know the special details about themselves. And so looking again at the left side of the page here, that is my handwriting. I like to print, and so you see my printing there. That's an objection we hear a lot. I don't like to write. Well, you're going to hear Catherine and I share a lot of details. Uh, one one uh, little tip that I'm going to quickly share now is that you can do a lot of typing on your computer. You can print out the story on acid-free paper and mount it in a traditional album, or you can do it digitally completely, and Catherine's going to give you more details about that. But if there's any of you sitting there sweating bullets because you think, I don't want any child to ever see my handwriting. <laughs> you know, don't worry. There are alternatives. And the second thing I want to encourage you is handwriting is an important part of history. It really is. Um, so a child will learn to uh, really appreciate your own handwriting. So I, I really want you to get past that. And then a third final tip about handwriting is you can actually go online now and have your handwriting converted into a computer font. I did that, and all I have to do is look at my computer instead of Ariel or New Times Roman. There it says Rhonda, and I can just click on that, and then everything I type is a very neat version of my handwriting. And so that's a fun alternative, too, especially, again, since we're encouraging you to journal, 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 tell the story. We want to make it as simple as possible. And Catherine and I... Um, would be delighted to help any of you with further questions as you go through this process to help you get over some of those common obstacles to getting this book done. Now, I want to draw your attention to um, the right-hand page. Now, keep in mind, if you can see the date, this was made in 1987. <laughs> this girl is going to turn 28 years old uh, this year. And so it might look kind of corny and uh, to you, all those little stickers, and I've cut out a card there. And you know what? That's okay. The, the good news about making a life book for your child is you can do it however you want. The scrapbooking police never came along and looked at my page and went, well, that card looks kind of ugly, and I don't know if I like where you put those stickers. And did you do enough writing or too much? No, no, no. No one is going to critique 
your life book. It is going to be precious to that child, whether you, whether you decorated it or whether it was super streamlined, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you made this book and that you told the story. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. This double page spread here shows the exact arrival moment. Um, sometimes there will be a camera in the delivery room, and I have some of those pictures coming up, too, from um, granddaughters that were born. But here we invited 50 friends and relatives to the airport, and both of our girls arrived in little wicker baskets. They were both identical. The handles looked a, different, a little different with all. But you can see the baby laying in the basket. We lift out this baby, and voila, we are instant parents. And some of the special people in our lives, and you heard Megan talk about whether it was, you know, some of the nurses, doctors, you know, infertility people. Um, down in the left-hand corner on the bottom, you can see Nora Manellis. She was the lady who uh, flew our baby to us, our daughter Julia, part of the way. And we don't know who grabbed that basket that started out with two babies in a basket before uh, one baby, our daughter, uh, came home to us. But Norma Nellis, we have exchanged Christmas cards with her um, since 1987. They really are special people in your life. And they really do, as Megan said, deserve to be written about. And it's so fun to have her photo of the exact moment that she handed our child to us. And then you can see uh, grandparents, our older daughter in the bottom picture saying hi to the new sister. It's so fun. And then all the stats. I arrived on Thursday, July 23rd. That's an important day that we celebrate. Um, just like a birthday, we celebrate the arrival day because that was the first day that she came home to us. And then all the details there under uh, here I am. And it's so fun because not only has Julia for 28 years looked at this photo album over and over and over again, there was no doubt that she knew she was adopted. Here's the pictures. I came on the airplane in a wicker basket, and obviously she looks very different from her from the brothers who are biological. Um, and so I agree wholeheartedly, keep few, don't keep secrets. And like I said, Julia has looked at this book hundreds of times in 28 years. But what really warms my heart is that Julia now has three daughters. And her oldest daughter, Layla, is seven years old. And when Layla comes over, one of the first things that Layla wants to do, even though Julia left home with seven completed photo albums, Layla loves to look at photo albums with me of her mother. It's just so precious. And Julia's girls are biological girls. They were not adopted. But to see their, her mother's story in the photo album is so precious to her. Um, it's really gratifying to me to know that the work that I did uh, for all four of our children to have these photo albums has been appreciated now for the next generation as well. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Now, again, don't glaze over when you see all the writing, but my parents uh, is the heading on that left page, and that's where you get to tell, and what I did was to tell all about myself and my husband, where we were born and where we went to school, and, and details that we thought were notable about us. And, and that was fun to do, and our kids, again, love to read that page because they're always amazed, wow, Mom, you chose to share those, in, those details and not others, that journaling, again, is so important. And then on the next page uh, are pictures of the grandparents and other family members, which is another important component of a life book, because in most of your situations, I'm sure, you have family members who are as excited as you are about this, whether it's your parents or siblings or friends. It's great to have other people in this life book who are displaying the same level of emotion and enthusiasm that you are for this precious little life that has just been blessed uh, to you. Okay, and now we can go on to the next slide. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> not only is there a traditional way, and when I say traditional, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean Real paper, real pens, you're touching real printed photos. That's a traditional album. 
and the photos that we've just gone through represent that. That hey, 28 years ago, we did not have the option that we do today, and that's a digital photo album. And so Catherine is now going to take you through a couple of options that you have with digital photo books. And so Catherine, take it away. <laughs> thank you so much, Rhonda. And thank you for your stories. They are, we can feel your passion. And so now that everyone is very inspired, uh, yes, you've got different options. You've the scrapbook, the digital photo book, and then also page prints, which you can see pictured there on the left. And by the way, the page prints and the book that you see on the right, many of these examples that you'll be seeing are from Heritage Makers templates that are ready and available for you to use, so it will be very easy. Next slide, please. The scrapbook. This traditional, versatile classic has now been updated and refreshed. And so you can see this look is a little bit different from the books back in the day. Uh, but you know, just like I hear do, every Every generation has a particular look, and this is, is a, a wonderful way to uh, hands-on create a book for your child. You can include memorabilia um, along with your printed photos and, as Rhonda said very, very eloquently and with great meaning, your written words, which are very important. And the nice thing is here, and you can see it in this picture, that uh, you have available to you a variety of designer pages and color with colors and patterns. And Rhonda said some very nice things about me and, and you know what I did with those baby pages back in the day. But this is all from a line that Rhonda has recently created, her brand of scrapbooking products are memories for life and so what you're, that's what you're looking at right here and those are all available to you through Heritage Makers so you can go and take a look and just see and there's something for everyone a style that you can identify with next slide please and here a wonderful example of a digital photo book and in fact here we have that baby girl Julia growing up um, and I, maybe Rhonda will want to make a comment sure. about this. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll just jump in. So Julia, the baby, who I just said is now grown up, uh, Nora Coel is her second daughter, born January 2012. And you can see a picture of her husband and their older daughter, Layla, and now Nora. And so Julia is an avid album maker, and I am so proud of her. Um, she loved having the life book photo albums that she grew up with, and so she's made personal albums for each of her girls. And this happens to be, um, like Catherine said, this is a digital book. So these pictures were not printed. They were just still on my computer. They were brought into uh, Heritage Makers, into a, um, a program that's already all set up to receive photos, and voila, in a short period of time, you can uh, create a book. And you can type the journaling, and whether, like I said, you can use your personal fonts or you can uh, use the fonts that are provided. Um, but nonetheless, it is a, it's a fun, easy way to make a book. And the one thing about digital is that once you've made this life book, you can make multiple copies of it. So you can make a copy for you. You can have a copy for the child. You can have a copy for your mother and your mother-in-law. <laughs> or, you know, lots of people can have copies when it's digital, which is uh, a real blessing um, that comes with digital. So, and I'll just quickly say, um, on the right-hand page, besides my husband and me and Julia, our older adopted daughter, Janetta, is on the right-hand page on the lower left, uh, holding her new little niece. So it's always fun to see kids when they grow up. And so I, I hope it's interesting to you, too. Okay, Catherine, back to you. <laughs> Let's go on then to the next slide. And here we've got Ada Pearl. And this is, you know, an example of beautiful artwork, ready-made theme templates. Um, mm -hmm. You can put many photos from all your devices into your digital book. And as Rhonda said, you know, printing multiple copies and actually in more than one size. So there are... It's very flexible, very adaptable, uh, many choices. And Rhonda, I'm sure you want to say something about beautiful Ada Pearl. 
right? This happens to be another of my granddaughters, uh, one of my son's uh, little girls. But once again, avid album makers, because of how easy it is. Uh, one of my daughters, like I said, makes all digital. My daughter-in-law loves all traditional. Um, but the point being is there are so many options now, you'll be able to find a style and a method that is right for you. And, and again, Catherine and I would love to help you. We, we don't want to waste our almost 30 years of experience doing this. <laughs> um, we really do want to serve you through this process. Go ahead, and Catherine. The, and the next slide. So this, that's perfect, Rhonda. Thank you. Would you like some help <laughs> with your child's life book? We can help you in a number of ways. And one being the, these two covers that you see right here. These are for some templates that are in development right now. Uh, this book I call Wonderful Me, and it is an embryo adoption template. And so since I, I have uh, met the wonderful folks over there um, with the Snowflake program, I've been working on these templates, and they include your page titles and journal prompts that relate specifically to embryo adoption. Uh, right now, of course, over in Heritage Makers, there are adoption templates for perhaps, um, like with Rhonda, international adoption and, and various other um, adoption templates. But this one will be specifically designed for embryo adoption. And it is customizable. So anything that's in there, you can change things, move them around. Um, in, in fact, if you want to get started even before this is ready, which is a, uh, perhaps about a month out, uh, you can go right over there and we've created a list of some of these titles and prompts so that you could take that list and go ahead in and choose whatever artwork you like and, and just get started. And who knows, your version may be even better than what, than what we're working on right now. So I encourage you to go ahead and do that if you are ready to go. Uh, but if you feel that maybe you're hesitating and you don't know where to start, there are real live people like Rhonda, like myself, who are happy to help you because this is what we do. This is what we've done and, and we love doing this because we believe that each of these babies is such a blessing and any way that we can be of service to you know, help you get started with just a little direction or as far as even hands-on creating the book with your guidance. Uh, that is available to you. And there's some contact information down at the bottom of this slide. Jot that down. We will try and connect you with someone who is in your area or that can help you with your specific need. So just know that if you'd like a little bit of help, there are people who are very happy to help you. Next slide. And here we are with page prints. Now this is an interesting hybrid option. Uh, because it is a digital print. It's very convenient because you create as you go. That gives you lots of flexibility. Uh, so if creating a whole book before you hit the button to publish seems intimidating, just know you can do a page at a time. These can then be put in a, a scrapbook album. You can slide them in a the sleeve. Or another way that I've seen this done uh, very nicely is putting that page print in a frame, and then you can switch that frame out, whether it's every month or perhaps for a relative. It would be a gift that's switched out every year. It's a very good way to share with others those, that ongoing sampling of photos as your baby grows. So if you just want to dip your toe in the water, try making some page prints because uh, it will give you the practice. You'll have that printed, beautiful page print and then you'll have the courage to continue on with the rest of your books. So, next slide. Some more ideas. Now, this book that you see, um, actually this is a little book about a gal named Laurel May. And Laurel May came earlier than she was supposed to. And so her parents set up a Facebook page for her and every day they would put in the updates because of course the family, the friends, the people at church, everyone wanted to know how she was doing. And Laurel's grandmother took all of the posts, she copied and pasted the words and the photos and put them in this beautiful digital book and then was able to make copies for mom and dad, 
for grandparents, for other relatives, even for some friends. And that's one more idea of how you can share because many people do. They'll put things on a blog or on Facebook and they'll they'll write down things that are very, very important. And then that's going to be all kind of lost in a long trail far away. And this is a way that you can save that and capture it. Another cute idea here uh, is creating a calendar. And this is a, a lovely thing as a gift and it also works great uh, where you can jot down daily developments, things that occur, uh, happenings were related to your to your child as far as they're on their way or we're getting ready or here they are and now they're growing. So all of these ways are very good that you can tell your child's story that when they are ready to see it, when they want to, to look at it, there it will be. Next slide, please. Tips. Okay, obviously you're going to begin as soon as you're able. And then here we have with Ada arriving. If you are in labor, that might not be the best time to start your album, but uh, as soon as you are able. You know, for some people, if there's a lot of waiting time, uh, begin with, like Rhonda said, those words, the getting ready, your thoughts, your feelings, all of that. Um, you may have your baby more quickly than you anticipated. So start right away. Start right now then. Um, and then once your baby arrives, include all those little developmental firsts because however your child arrived in a, in a little wicker basket or by delivery, um, you know, from you personally, all, children want to know the same things. They want to know their story and so these and how they developed and what was unique and different about them. Uh, to help you keep track of some of that, as it, I know what it's like to be a busy mom, um, and so some little tips is keep a journal. It can be a little book by your nightstand. It can be something that you do on your computer or on little journal cards, and uh, along with the scrapbook pages and all of that, there are coordinated journal cards that are very pretty and each day or each week or whenever you want, you can grab a card, write down the meaningful moments from that day and then just put it away. And then when you're ready to bring it all together with the photos, that is done because those words are the things that you will forget the most. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. that will be what you forget quickly. Right. So so please um, follow Rhonda's advice and jot those little mm -hmm. things down. And then for memorabilia and other, and other little keepsake treasures, have a file or a box, and you'll keep it all organized. And then when you are ready to, to make it all come together in a beautiful book, you'll have everything that you need. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. other comment, Rhonda? Yeah, I just want to make a, a fast comment about this page, Ada Arrived. That top picture truly was Ada's mother, Krisa, in labor. And while it may seem a little odd to have the camera in the labor room, everybody loves, <laughs> everybody in the family, even the mother doing all the hard work there, uh, loves having these pictures. And this page is very simple and streamlined. There's six pictures a quick little title, and a lot of journaling. It's a page that can be made quickly, and I really want to emphasize, I know some people, and Catherine and I have heard this year after year after year over and over, I don't think I'm creative enough to make a photo album or a life book. And I commend you for being on this call to hear the tips about doing it. And I want to just say one more time, this is not about creativity. This is about showing love to your child and affirming your child, and it's about just capturing pictures and stories. It is not a contest about creativity at all. And believe me, that sometimes really hits people hard as they get into this process. They're just like, does this look good enough? And again, it's not about the looks, it's about the message that you're conveying to your child as you're doing it. Yes, thank you, Rhonda. And next slide, please. And here's a little example of a couple um, a couple pages, a cover and a page from another book that was done in Heritage Maker. So there's plenty of time to share as the journey begins. You're going to be adding your thoughts, your feelings, your details. And then when that book, that first life book is done, 
well, then you'll be creating some more of all of the growing and development and as that child becomes who they were meant to be. Uh, next slide. And here you are, Rhonda, with your girl. Yes, and, I know. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sorry. And I know you've got some very, um, you've got some inspiring testimony from the girls themselves about the impact that that their life books had on them. And so, if you would share that, I think that would be a lovely way to close this. Thank you very much. Well, on the left is a picture of the girls when they were small like four and two years old, looking at their photo album. And then on the right is the girls today. And one of the things that has really touched me as a parent, and I've talked to you a little bit about Layla, the granddaughter, coming over. But one day, Janetta and Julia were sitting down at the house looking at photo albums. And both of them looked up and said, Mom, thank you. Thank you so much for doing these albums for us. We know that you love us, and you've said that you love us, but there's something so affirming about looking at this book and seeing such tangible reminders of how much you love us, and for um, all the effort, time, money, um, emotions that went in even to our adoptions, and we love you, and we're so grateful. And, you know, it's hard to find um, anything that could re replace words like that <laughs> from your children to show that level of gratitude for what, um, you know, for what you've done as a parent. So I really do want to encourage you to take this step and, and be brave and, and make a life book and know that you've got uh, lots of people alongside of you that, that are honored to help. So thank you for letting me share my story about my family. And here's one more beautiful example. Uh, this is a book that was done on Heritage Makers. And in fact, you could look at that and, and even use this template if you'd like to do that.